One of the biggest things slowing drivers down is that they just don't enter corners quickly enough. This means that they can't carry the speed through the corner and ultimately it costs them a lot of lap time. In this video, I'm going to explain to you a few tips so that you can carry more speed into the corner and become a faster racing driver. I'm Scott Mansell from Driver61, where we create faster drivers who feel in total control of their cars and ultimately win championships. Over the last three years, I've worked with hundreds of drivers during my masterclass training program, and not carrying enough speed into the apex of a corner is where the majority of them are losing the most amount of time. If you can carry more speed into the corner, you're going to significantly reduce your lap time. So the first thing that you need to do is get the timings and the amount of your inputs through the steering wheel and through the pedals perfect. And um, a lot of the time I see that drivers are turning in multiple times into the corner. They're modulating their brake pressure and not trail braking correctly into the corner. And then they're getting on the accelerator too hard. And the point of this is that the platform of the car is moving around too much. When the platform of the car is, is, is changing too much, it means that the weight is moving around in that way and that the balance is constantly changing and the amount of grip that you have is also constantly changing. Now the problem with this is, is that it develops uh, a lack of understanding and a lack of confidence in the driver because the, the playing field is, is always changing, the amount of grip is changing, the balance is always changing, which means that then the driver doesn't get a stable feeling from the car. So the first thing that we need to work on is actually getting this foundational technique right through the corner. It doesn't matter if we're right on the limit or not, but we need the car to only dive on the brakes, ease up, roll as you're coming into the corner, and then sit down and come out. We don't want too much um, weight shifting around back and forth all over the car. Once you get this right, then that gives you a stable platform to actually find the limit as you're entering the corner. But if you don't, you're never gonna get right on the limit on the entry. Usually the issue here is vision. The drivers won't be looking through the corner enough or scanning back and forward, giving themselves enough information. And I've got a couple of videos um, on the Drive61 channel where you can take a look at this in more detail. Once you've got the foundational technique right as you enter the corner, the next thing to do is to give yourself conscious progression to move the car faster and faster into the corner. So again, during my training programs, I kind of leave this decision up to the drivers to a point and they'll end up just braking in the same point each lap and, and don't have progression. So they'll get on the brakes and then they'll slow the car down too much to the corner and then the next lap they'll do exactly the same. There's no progression there. So first of all, what we have to do is to pick a conscious braking reference as we enter the corner. Once you've got that conscious braking reference, then you have a solid understanding of how you can move forwards. So if you brake at this point and you slow the car down too much, you go through the corner, everything's under control, and that's completely fine. But because you've remembered where you braked on the previous lap, then you can move that forwards by five or 10 meters on the next lap and carry a little bit more speed in. Now I know this seems very simple, but it's something that when there's lots of other stuff going on on track and other cars and you're thinking about other things, um, it's, it's, it's something that I don't see happen that often. So really try to be conscious about where you're braking and then proactively move that point forwards. The next thing you need to think about is making sure that your vision is in the right area. Now, I just briefly spoke about that, but as you begin to carry more and more speed into a corner, sometimes the alarm bells in our brain start to go off because we're just entering at a speed that is quicker than we might imagine, even though the car is, is you know, just still below the limit. So the first thing to drop off is the vision. So if you are entering the corner, you're moving that braking point deeper and deeper, and you're getting in faster and faster, but then all of a sudden it feels like you're going too fast and your inputs are becoming harsh and not as fluid as before. Usually it's because the vision goes. And the vision goes because we feel like we're entering too quickly, and it's our natural reaction then to bring our vision narrow down, closer to the car, and not look through the corner. 
but actually it's at this point when we really need to open up our vision, look through the corner as much as possible, so we're give, giving ourselves the time to process the information that we're looking at. Then typically, as we carry more speed into the corner and the car's loaded up properly, and the vision's correct, and the racing line's right, and it's all feeling good, the next step is that drivers will tend to be limited by the rear of the car as they turn the car into the corner. So we're getting oversteer on entry. Problem with this is that a lot of drivers just stay in that area. They feel like the limit here is the limit, but the limit is not a static line. We can change the amount of grip that a car's got as we're entering and going through a corner. So the natural thing is that drivers will oversteer on the entry and just kind of stop there and not try to progress. However, the reason that they're oversteering on the entry is that they actually want to slow the car down a little bit more, which means that when they turn in, the front of the car has got too much weight and the rear is up in the air and feeling a little bit lively. They then turn the car into the corner and because the rear's not got enough weight in it, it begins to oversteer and the driver says, well, I'm at the limit, that's as fast as I can go. However, if the driver actually came to a, a slightly lighter brake pressure while they were trail braking into the corner, we would put more grip to the, to the back of the car, take it away from the front, we would readdress the imbalance, the oversteer, generate more grip, and then we could enter the corner more quickly. This is something very challenging for drivers because it's an unnatural thing to actually come out of the brake pedal when the car already feels like it's on the limit and sliding. So this is something that I work on a lot with drivers and actually getting them to have the natural reaction to ease up off the brake pedal when the car's actually feeling like it's out of control. But if you focus on that and get yourself into the rhythm of, of testing this and coming up very slightly off the brake pedal, you'll generate that grip and be able to go through the corner even more quickly. Now that you've learned about carrying more speed into a corner, I've put together a playlist to, for you which will shortcut your learning and make you quicker in the shortest time possible. Just click up here and I'll catch you in the next video.